All right, let's talk about survey research definitions and types. So what is survey research? So this is a definition that I feel is the most general. It doesn't box you in, right? It doesn't say this is survey research and not that. So it's a methodology for collecting data to describe a population. So there are a few key elements here. So the first part is collect data. Yeah. So it's mostly quantitative using instruments, but the data can also be qualitative. Uh, but the point is you're collecting uh, data, right, that you're going to analyze, either quantitatively or qualitatively. And then you're supposed to describe something. It can be factual, for example, age, gender. Uh, it can also be subjective, uh, beliefs, attitudes, perceptions, and, and so on. And the next important uh, component is population. You know, it's supposed to describe a group of people with certain characteristics. So this sort of general definition uh, gives you an idea how broad survey research is. So you might not have been aware that you, know, you yourself may have done survey research, uh, either as a participant or, or, or as a researcher. These are some local uh, examples, uh, a study looking at TPAC, uh, in Singapore pre-service teachers. So TPEC is sort of a framework uh, of the kinds of knowledge that effective teachers should have that evolves on technology, pedagogy, and content. And you have another study looking at students' perceptions of change in the Singapore education system. So it's about perceptions. And lastly, this would be undergraduate uh, nursing students uh, that uh, how, how they experience stress and the expectations and so on. So, so different populations, different aspects that they're trying to describe. It's, okay, so why, why do you do survey research? Any, anytime you perform a research, you need to know why you want to do a particular methodology. So the good thing about survey research is that you can get large amounts of data. So this is a study this is among the largest surveys that's been done, looking at language acquisition from two quarter of a million uh, English uh, speaking uh, sample, pretty large. It's relatively inexpensive. You know, you you don't have to have big equipment, and you don't you don't need have to have a lot of manpower to collect uh, some of this uh, survey data. And it's representative and accurate in many cases. You know, this is an example from America, as you know. We have a president. Uh, it was predicted that he is going to get 44.9 percent of the uh, votes, uh, and based on a few thousand people who were sampled, and it turned out that it was within one percent or so, based on the actual votes of about 100 million people. So you can see how accurate it can be, right? In terms of um, the the, in this case, it's, it's a survey, it's a poll, whether they can support. Or vote for someone, as as you know, you know. Uh, it was expected that Hillary Clinton was gonna get more votes, but she didn't end up being the president. We, we can talk about why that is the case, but this example sort of illustrates the power of surveys, right? Like you can get really accurate results. Okay, one thing you should know is that survey research does not identify cause and effect. Yeah, so cause and effect is something that you can only uh, make statements about when you manipulate variables, right? You do assignments and then you manipulate variables and uh, make causal statements. Um, surveys do not do that, typically. Yeah. Uh, it does not necessarily represent actual behaviors. For actual behaviors, you either have to observe or um, uh, record their data, the actual data, behavioral data. So it's all self-reported, right? Surveys is what people tell you. And it's it's not simply focus groups and interviews, although focus groups and interviews can be done as part of the survey research, but it's not just that. There's a lot other stuff involved in survey research. This is what we're going to go through. Okay. All right, so what are the types of survey research? Uh, so one important type of survey research is called cross-sectional, meaning you're trying to survey a population using a sample at one time point, right? You're just trying to ask uh, certain questions and get certain data at one time point. The other type of survey research is longitudinal, multiple time points. So over a year, uh, sorry, multiple years, uh, 
or over, you know, before the semester and after the semester. Um, and you can subdivide it into uh, trend study. So you're studying the same uh, population, but not necessarily the same people. For example, you're interested in first year pre-service teachers, right? So you, you study, uh, study the uh, first year pre-service teachers this year, and in the following year, you will study the, the first year pre-service teachers uh, again. So it's longitudinal, but these are not the same first year pre-service students, right? They're just different, but that's considered a longitudinal uh, study. There's also cohort study in which you track or you follow the same cohort. So for example, you uh, follow uh, the last uh, diploma. Are there still uh, diploma students being admitted? Um, well, I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, there, yeah. okay, all right. Maybe that's not a good, good example, but maybe uh, the first cohort of TSP, Teacher Scholars Program uh, students, yeah? There's this new program. So you follow them over many years after they graduated, when they started teaching and so on. So that's sort of cohort study, but the subjects may not be the same ones. You know, this is just you're following the cohort and you're sampling them. The last one is panel study. This is when you follow the same individuals. So for example, all of you here, right? I want to do a survey. I'm going to follow all of you and sample all of you for the next, I don't know, week or two or three and so on, get data. So, so that's longitudinal. The different types of longitudinal uh, studies. So the next activity, or the first activity, next thing I want to do is give you a few research abstracts and I want you to quickly tell me what uh, type of study it is. So the research abstract is on the course website under activity one. So you guys learn how to read, right? Uh, research articles and so on. So it's a very good skill to be able to quickly read an abstract and decide, you know. what study it is. So can anyone tell me what the first study is? Is it cross-sectional, longitudinal? Yeah, it's kind of giveaway, right? <laughs> All right, so this longitudinal study of uh, perceptions of self, you know, self-efficacy in secondary school students. All right, so that, that's pretty straightforward. How about study two? So very quickly, cross-sectional, yeah? Very good, wow. <laughs> Looking at TPAC, yeah? Pre-service teachers, yeah. That's good. All right, how about study three? Cross-sectional, it's also a giveaway. All right, I know it seems like trivial for the word to pop up, but you know, one thing I learned in my PhD is that you know, you are able to read and uh, classify or understand the study very quickly by looking at certain keywords. So, so I, think, I think it's a good skill to be able to pick up. So these are the different uh, types of studies uh, for, for uh, surveys. Okay. All right, so one of the longitudinal studies is looking at uh, self-concept uh, in a group of secondary one students, either normal academic or express students, and then they, they were surveyed and asked whether you know, they can follow the lessons easily, whether they're good in school subjects, and so on. So the, the researchers were trying to describe how they felt about themselves yeah? over time. It's, it's longitudinal. This cross-sectional study looks at uh, pre-service teachers and their TPAC knowledge, you know. So these are some local examples. All right, it's good. You, you guys are getting uh, uh, a very good sense of, of the kinds of research that can be done.